We're going to talk to you today about width and lag in the golf swing and why you can't try to do both, but you can have both. One ruins the other, while one actually creates the other. So if we have Zach into an address position here and we talk about width, which is the most misunderstood concept in golf. Normally the golf industry is sitting there telling you the only place you can get it is you take it way out wide like that. So he takes it way out wide, he comes up to the top of his golf swing. It's the same people telling you, once you get there, you gotta pull that handle all the way down just like this to generate lag. Well, if you do that, you don't have a wide enough area to release and you're gonna hit it right into the ground. So what was the whole point of doing it in the first place, trying to get the width, all right? So if Zach actually did that, you'd see him go up to the top of his swing, gets a lot of width, but then he tries to generate that lag all by himself, and he's gonna hit it pretty fat, and it's gonna go way out to the right, you can see he kind of looked like he got stuck there, okay? So how do we generate lag? By generating proper width, all right? Because width creates lag. So if we have Zach get into a dress position here again, and he goes up to the top, and it doesn't really matter how he gets up there, what we want to make sure that he does is generate width on the way down. That's where widths really start to generate. So he's going to feel like he slightly casts the club out, and as his body starts to normally turn just like this, you can see his hands get slightly ahead of the ball while the club head has its own momentum for its release. So width is really generated on the downswing and by his body slightly turning creates its own lag. As a professional golfer, and Zach is one, he's not trying to feel the lag and he's most certainly not trying to produce it. So if we have Zach hit a shot like that, let's see what that would look like. It sounded a lot better, it looked a lot cleaner, and it was a lot smoother. He didn't get stuck because he was generating width, which created natural lag, okay? We're gonna show you both of these shots now down the line. So if Zach tried to hit a shot generating his own lag, which is the bad shot, that would look a little bit like this. Again, you can see that he feels like he gets stuck. He hits it pretty good, but it goes way out to the right. This time, he's going to go up to the top and generate a lot of width on the way down. And because of that, he'll have a little bit of lag and he'll make a downward strike. It looks a lot cleaner and it's flying straight down the range. So in conclusion, trying to generate your own lag ruins width. Having proper width and doing it in the right place in the golf swing can generate lag. You as a golfer don't want to try to feel it or try to create lag all on your own. It's a byproduct of what happens when swinging the club the way you're supposed to, with its own momentum generating width going through the golf ball. With any questions, leave a comment below. Try this at home. I hope it helps, and thanks for watching.